Hey there everybody, Mr. Dickin here. In this video, we are going to be dealing with a few quadratic applications. So quadratic applications is essentially word problems. So where might scenarios like this uh, when dealing with quadratics happen in real life? One thing to keep in mind with quadratics is if I visualize a graph of any quadratic, let's say we have a quadratic that opens downward. So something like this. There's really only a handful of things that we can ask you, right? So we can ask you, what is the vertex? So what's the maximum height this thing reaches? Uh, we can ask you, where does it hit the x-axis? So what are the x-intercepts? We can use factoring, completing the square, uh, quadratic formula, all those to solve that. And then we can also ask, what was the y-intercept? And that's, you know, in standard form, that's just our C value. Or we could plug in zero for X and see what our Y value is. But with regard to quadratics, those are really the only things that we can ask for. So as long as we know how to find our vertex, our X intercepts, or our Y intercept, then we can get anything we need. So let's see what kind of problems we might see. All right, first one. Jennifer hits a golf ball from the ground and it follows the projectile path negative 16 t squared plus 100t. So we have an equation that's going to be important. Negative 16t squared plus 100t, where t is the time in seconds and h is the height of the ball. I'm assuming we're going to be talking about feet. And it says we want to find the highest point that her golf ball has reached and also when does it hit the ground again. So if I were to visualize this, there's my axis. There is no y-intercept here, which means it would be zero. So this graph starts off at zero. She hits a golf ball, it goes upward, and then it comes back down and hits the ground. Now this parabola obviously continues on forever and ever, but we really only care about x or y-intercepts and then the vertex. So those are the only important things that we need. Uh, first part says find the highest point. Well, the highest point, that's going to be the vertex. And hopefully we remember, in order to find the vertex, to figure out that point, we would use the formula opposite of b over 2a. And then to figure out the y value here, we would just take whatever that, f that value that we solve for for x and plug that back into the function. When you do this, your x value is going to talk about the time your y value will talk about the height. So it's going to say how long did it take to get to the maximum height and what was the maximum height. So let's go ahead and figure out what is the highest point that this ball reaches. So I'm going to do the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b, which is 100, over 2 times a, well that's negative 16. So I'm going to get negative 100 over negative 32, and I already know that that is not going to be a clean number. So I'm going to use a graphing calculator to calculate that for me, and when I do so, I get 3.125. Now that's not necessarily the vertex, that's just the x value for the vertex. So now what I need to do is take that 3.125 and plug that into need to take this and plug it in for t. Fortunately, if you have a calculator sitting in front of you, that's not going to take very long to do at all. So we're going to have negative 16 times 3.125 quantity squared plus 100 times 3.125. When you're doing this on a calculator, make sure you're including parentheses. If you're going on a like an iPhone calculator, which I would advise because the iPhone calculator is horrendous, make sure you do 3.125 squared first, then multiply by the negative 16. Regardless, you should get 156.25 feet. 156.25 feet. All right, so that's the first part of the answer. Second part is when does her ball reach the ground again? So when does the ball reach the ground? Well, it starts off on the ground, but then it also lands back on the ground. So we're finding an x-intercept. We're setting this thing equal to zero. 
So I've got negative 16 t squared, which is our formula, negative 16 t squared plus 100 t equals zero. Now I've got a plethora of options here. I could use quadratic formula. I could do the opposite of b plus or minus squared to b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I could do that. My a value is negative 16. My b value is 100. I have no c value, so it would just be zero. So that's possible. I could factor out if I wanted to. I could factor out a quote unquote GCF. If I pulled out a negative 16 T, I would get T minus, let's see, what's 100 divided by 16? Hmm, 100 divided by 16. That would be, go to my calculator, 6.25. So that's an option as well. So me personally, I'd probably gravitate, anytime there's only two terms, I'd probably gravitate towards just taking a GCF. You'll notice this GCF doesn't really give me a clean number, but we don't really care. Now from here, I could take each factor to get my two x-intercepts. We'd have t equals zero. Well, yeah, we know that. That's the starting position right there. But we want this guy. Well, that would be t equals 6.25. And again, that 6.25 came from dividing our 100 by the common factor that we took out of negative 16t. So that's where we got that from. You would get the exact same result if you did this using the quadratic formula. All right, so those are the two answers. We found the highest, the highest height, and then we found when it hits the ground again. Yay. All right, number two. Let's say we're building a cute little rectangular rose garden against the back of our house with a fence around it, but we only have 120 feet of fencing available. So 120 feet of fencing available, well, that is going to lead me to think that we're dealing with perimeter here. What would the dimensions be, length and width of the garden, with one side attached to the house to make the area of the garden as large as possible? So we want area of a rectangle. So if I kind of dig deep into my geometry knowledge, I know area is length times width. Okay. So we want that thing to be as large as possible. Here is an example of what our graph might look like, or sorry, what our diagram might look like. If you are ever given a word problem, it is in your best interest to sketch out a picture, if at all possible. All right, so we know that the total has to be 120. And we've got three sides going on because this side right here along the house, we don't need to put a fence there. So if I'm building a fence, I need to have two equal side lengths, and we'll, we'll say that's the width. Two equal side lengths being the width because it's going to be rectangular. And then that other side, in this case here, would be whatever is left over of the fence. So the length is going to be whatever's not used from the width. Well, I've used a width twice, a width dimension. So let's say maybe this thing is 20 feet wide. So I use 20 here, 20 here. That means I've used 40 feet of fence total. Well, if I've used 40, the only thing left would be 120 minus 40. Okay, so that's where this little piece comes from. We have the widths, these widths have to be the same, and then the length is the remainder of the fence available. So if I'm trying to find the area of this thing, area is length times width. So when we calculate area, our length was 120 minus 2w, and our width was just w. So I'll distribute that in, boom, boom. We'll get area equals 120 w minus 2 w squared. And just because I like to be consistent, I'm going to throw this thing into standard form. I didn't change any values at all. I just threw it in standard form. All right. So now I can visualize this as a graph. There's a y-intercept at 120, it looks like. Oh, nope. I forgot a W, silly me. 
There we go. There's a y-intercept at zero, it looks like. And since we have a negative a value, our graph is going to be a downward opening parabola. And we want to know where is that highest point? Where is the maximum? So the maximum is going to give us two values. It's going to give us the width and the area. So when we find that point, it's going to be in the format of width comma area. So let's solve for the width. If I'm finding the vertex, we would just do opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b over 2a, that'd be the opposite of 120 divided by 2 times a, which is negative 2. So that'd be negative 120 divided by negative 4. Well, that's going to give me 30. All right, so the width is going to be 30 feet. Okay. Well, if I know the width, I can figure out the length relatively quickly. Right, because if we have 30 feet here, 30 feet here, that would be 60 feet total. So that means the length would have to be 60 as well for 120 minus 2 times 30. So the length is going to be 60. So we'd have 60 feet wide. Okay, not wide, long. And from there, I could pretty easily get the dimensions, right? Or, the, sorry, the area. To find the area, I would just multiply these two things together. 30 times 60, so I'd get 1,800 square feet would be the area. Now, I would also get 1,800 if I took this 30 and plugged it back in for W here. I'd get the same exact value. Oh, boy. All right, last one. The profit from selling local ballet tickets depends on the ticket price using past receipts. We find that the profit can be modeled by a function. Yay, we have a function. Where X is the price of each ticket. We want to find the ticket price that gives the maximum profit. Also, find what is that maximum profit. So again, we have a situation where we have a downward opening parabola. So we're going to have a downward opening parabola. They give us the equation, and they task us with finding what is the maximum value. Now when we find the maximum, that's going to give us two values. We're going to have the ticket price and then the total profit. And I can't spell either. So price, comma, profit. So we're going to do the exact same thing we've been doing. We're going to figure out what is the opposite of b over 2a. So the opposite of b over 2 times a. So that's going to be our x value for the vertex. When we calculate that out, that would be $20. So $20 per ticket. And then we would take 20 and we'd plug it back in for x in our initial problem in order to figure out what is the profit associated with that. So I'd plug in 20 for x. And again, that can be done straight into a calculator. And when we do that, we would get $6,060 profit. All right. So that's it and that's all, folks. When you're doing these, again, there's only a handful of things we can ask you. What are the x-intercepts? What's the vertex? Aside from that, there's really not, not much to quadratics. To find the vertex, you're using opposite of b over 2a. To find x-intercepts, you can graph it. You can use quadratic formula. You can factor. It's all up to you. Sorry for the length of this video. My apologies. I try to keep them under 10, but, you know, there's a lot to discuss on this one. You know the drill. If you have any questions, please let me know. As always, good luck, have fun, be safe, roll tide.